Let's discuss how the black nationalists over at Black Hammer have been hit by the gavel ban hammer, shall we? Now this is, before we go into it, let's discuss their ideology of critical race theory. If you'd like to go over and sign up to lotuseaters.com and become a premium member, you can watch Carl excoriating the critical race theorists and how they took lessons indirectly from Nietzsche. Uh, his amoralism, his belief that all ideology and morality is merely interpretation, and this pairs quite nicely with my, my freemium article, um, Conservatives Must Abandon Equality. I updated it with why yeah, yeah. why uh, critical race theory had actually con conquered the, con uh, the concept of equality. It's been linguistically captured. Um, so you can go and read about how Sylvia Winter, who's one of the founding less often read scholars of critical race theory, um, indicted and de-godded Christian morality to then hollow out our concept of equality to repackage communism, but I won't spoil everything. You can go and read that. And speaking of crazy communists, we go over to this brilliant Twitter thread, which I thought was very instructive about the state of online leftism. So it's an eight-part Twitter thread, and I'll, I'll read a few quotes here. When I was in the Communist Party, at one point, the majority of the branch was white, autistic, trans high school kids. They were very unreliable, completely unable to connect with actual working-class people. I felt like I was running a daycare for special needs kids. And it reminds me of the, the cartoon yeah. of Stone Tosses. Workers of the world unite, and, and then it's it's the, the American trucker standing next to it, and the college kid goes, Dad? As in, what are you doing here? At first, I thought that being in a Communist Party would be too good for them. Maybe it would help them mature and stop being so damn weird that they'd actually be able to connect with workers, not just other trans anime cat girls online. I was very wrong. Funnily enough, I went to uh, went out in Oxford on Saturday to explore, and I was just sat on a park bench, and two guys were walking past me. They were very sort of slubbish beta male leftists, wearing you know branded T-shirts or whatever Disney had put out, and I overheard them talking about essentially the same thing of where they said, oh yeah, but an actual commune would work, but you can't just be an artist or a musician for the cause as they're walking past. And I had to explain to my girlfriend that these people genuinely think that when they get into a commune, they're not going to be doing any hard labor. They're going to be doing you know, neurodivergent game development for the cause. It's ridiculous. Um, being in the part, uh, maybe it would actually help them mature and not stop being so damn... Oh, sorry, I read that one. Being in the party didn't make them better communists. Their presence just made the party worse. They brought in all kinds of liberal postmodern nonsense. They created toxic cultish echo chamber culture, uh, completely disconnected from what most workers actually care about. This could have actually been written by Thomas. Uh, and after spending nearly a year trying to educate them on things like dialectical materialism, Marx's political economy, the theory of socialist states, they all left. Several joined the white support for Black Hammer, an insane anti-Marxist cult scam. Very interesting. Much effort to educate them about Marxism, uh, only for them to join a cult that denounces Marx as a white KK colonizer, KK communist. It seemed like they only wanted to chase whatever looked the most radical and countercultural, not the truth. They just wanted an edgy fringe. Aesthetic, not socialism. When I learned... Uh, what I learned is that the Western Communist Movement has the, is the si sincere dearth of quality, disciplined, professional cadre. I've got to told you that about any socialist movement, mate, including Marx, that may be, in fact, our big biggest problem. When the Cuban Revolution began, Fidel only had about 50 men with him. The Communist Party of China began on a small boat with just a few dozen people present. But through building a dedicated, co competent cadre, they were able to succeed. Communist parties in the West will not succeed until they, too, can build up their cadre into professional force and not be and will not be composed of teenage anime cat girls or Twitch streamers with a Napoleon complex which are really two sides of the same immature coin i never thought i'd agree with the communist until now no me neither um <laughs> he'd taken direct shots at vorsh and hassan there the most arch capitalists imaginable and they are right they are polluting your movement but uh I'm fine for it to be polluted. So, speaking of the Black Hammer group in question, the utterly incompetent black nationalists, we have two podcasts here which you and Callum covered at the time. Mm -hmm. It's 128 and 139. Why don't you give us a quick rundown on exactly who Black Hammer are? So, Black Hammer are headed by the one and only Ghazi Kodzo, also known as Black Hitler, for calling Anne Frank a colonizer. We get onto that in a minute. <laughs> I'm not going to steal your thunder. Don't worry. But yes, um, we talked about them going up into the Colorado mountains and trying to set up a commune um, too, too far above sea level to really be able to grow crops, which was pretty stupid because they wanted to be self-sustaining and self-sufficient. I also talked about the fact they were making these earth bag homes, which are just bags of earth put into a bag, but loads of our own audience castigated me for that, just like, oh no, earth bag homes are perfectly le legitimate, but no. it's basically a glorified mud hut. Yeah, there were, co there were condon shacks, no. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, they wanted to go up there, but eventually um, it, it turned out that they didn't actually pay for the land that they were so called <laughs> of course not. occupying. Squatters. Who'd have thought that communists don't understand property rights? Um, so yes, they got kicked off basically without a fight by law enforcement, and then they disappeared seemingly from the radar. But they did ask to debate me for doing these two segments, but 
when, upon like following up on it, they never got back to us. And I wonder why. I wonder if they were too busy with the with what we're about to cover. Um, the website has four principles of unity on it, which is quite funny. And it leads with, we believe the color colonized proletariat should have dictatorship over our lives, land, labor, and resources. So despite denouncing Marx, they literally inherit the dictatorship of the proletariat idea. So we're going to play a video here. This is what Ghazi Kodo was originally known for as some sort of strange, effeminate, quaint TikTok star um, posting this on, on YouTube. So let's talk to them real quick and let's see what they have to say. Uhuru. Uhuru. Do you owe reparations? Absolutely. Why you say that? Wait, who is you? Beryl Shepley. Uhuru Beryl. Mm -hmm. Now, you owe me some money. Mm -hmm. Okay, you owe me reparations. Absolutely. Why is that? Because every freedom that I have and have taken for granted for my entire life has been made possible by wealth that my ancestors stole. Uhuru. Mm -hmm. Good. Uhuru. Uhuru. What your name is? Jackson. Uhuru oh Jackson. Gosh. You owe me reparations. I do. Why that? Because I have benefited from the wealth that was stolen from mm -hmm. you. Tell as it. have all my ancestors, um, the ones who owned slaves and the ones who did not, the Jews in, uh, the white Jews in Hungary. Every you better tell on the white Jews. Say that again. The white Jews in Hungary, the fake Jews. So yes, we can, fake white we Jews. can mm -hmm. end white this Jews. strange anti-Semitic effeminate struggle session but that was what he was originally known for and then things started getting a bit out of hand so let's look at black hammer's website 10 reasons why Ghazi kozo is the leader of the anti-white revolution and i'm so glad websites like this exist because this is the logical conclusion of critical race theory and when kimberly crenshaw and uh joy reed go on msnbc and try and run cover for it no 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 this is the point they are black separatists who want to kill white people. We should be of no disillusionment about that. The ideology of critical race theory leads to violence in the streets, race war, and they believe they will win. That is why they're pushing it. That is why we disagree with it. I don't want to fight my former Ghanaian neighbours. Thank you very much. They were very nice people. <laughs> so, some of the reasons include Ghazi built Black Hammer in a broken down trailer two hours away from the closest dollar store without two pennies in his pocket using the science of organisation Ghazi was able to turn nothing into everything. So he just Black Walter White. He earned the moniker Black Hitler. That's actually... Uh, a, is that a selling point? That's a selling point in this article. I'm not joking. <laughs> yet. Um, also, Ghazi is... They are a queer, gender, non-conforming, revolutionary leader. Now, I don't think he's going to lead the black people to freedom, being queer, gender, non-conforming, because if you jump to the next one, and obviously we can't put too much faith in polls, but I did get a little research article in the next tab, and it's that 70% of black Americans say homosexuality is always wrong. <laughs> so I don't I don't think that you're going to lead your people out of Egypt, my friend. Um, Kozo then called Anne Frank a bleach demon, a Becky, a Karen, and a colonizer. Yes, well-known colonizer, Anne Frank. I mean, do you remember oh, the segment a little while ago that I believe Harry, Harry and Callum did where they said Anne Frank had white privilege? It's identical energy. Uh. And then during the during the commune's short lifespan, which which you mentioned, they actually claimed to have burned copies of Anne Frank's diary for. Bond. They did, yeah. I, I covered that in my coverage. I forgot about that yeah. actually. Yeah. So they they also bought the diaries though, so that's really kind of a. Well, they only claimed to do it because it wasn't actually a photo of the things burning, so it mm -hmm. might have just been quite Making literally inflammatory. Yeah. Um, <laughs> are, are you accusing Black Hammer of lying, Josh? How could you? Me, never. Oh, I, I trust every word they've got to say. Well, in a strange twist of fate, um, they may actually be allied with some unlikely allies as well. Black Hammer have formed a coalition with the Proud Boys. <laughs> what? Yeah. I thought I'd catch you off guard that, that one. <laughs> Black Hammer and the Power Boys are forming a coalition to defeat the disgusting, pedo-loving, welfare economy Democrats and their puppet master Big Pharma, who have been poisoning us all for too long. Wow. Now, I don't want to say based. <laughs> but. But um, <laughs> it is possible to say we can diagnose the correct issue and administer the wrong treatment here. Yes, the Democrats are groomers. They are racists. They hate black people, according to Lyndon Johnson's very targeted welfare reforms, which still exists, so I suppose you could say systemic racism is still around. And Big Pharma, we're not commenting on the vaccine here, but they have a, a dubious legal history, um, particularly Johnson & Johnson, for example, who put asbestos in their baby powder and caused women to have cancer. That happened last year. It wasn't very well publicised, was it? There's I didn't even know in, about that. There's no. an article in the Metro, and Neil Oliver covered it on GB News. Other than that, no news outlet covered it. Asbestos in the baby formula sounds like... That's almost too extreme for Alex Jones, and yet yeah. it happened. Yeah, well, their signature baby powder was filled with that stuff. So it caused cancer, oh. ovarian cancer. 
quite ironic. Despite all this nonsense, um, you have an article on the website. Ga- Ghazi Kodo is a is a people's Robin Hood. So I'm going to read some quotes here. Um, it praised him for hanging out, uh, handing out M95 moss to capital C colonized people during the COVID-19 pandemic, not just in America, but abroad in places like Nigeria. In the process of this project, it came, became clear how dangerous petty bourgeois people can be inside a revolutionary apparatus. It is something laid down in history. Mao speaks of it. Ho Chi Minh speaks of it. But as Mao says, you don't know a thing until you experience it. So we see the communists leaning back on lived experience again. <laughs> petty bourgeois colonized sellouts make their individual needs, fears, and shortcomings the center of this work. And in doing so, slow down the work for people. Eventually, this individualism makes these sellouts fend for themselves, backstabbing and undermining the revolution. The damage that the petty bourgeois sellouts did was not to individuals, but to the collective masses around the world, and it was despicable and disgusting. Now, you might be confused as to what this is referring to, particularly because this was published on the 24th of July, so two days ago. So we'll skip over to a recent event that they're referring to about someone on the inside getting them in trouble. And this is their Twitter account. It says, Rest in Power, their Minister for Defence, AP. He had a real name and it's in the next article, but we won't go over to that just yet. In a targeted attack by the Firevet Police Department. Uh, yeah, Fayetteville. Fi- 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 wow, that's my dyslexia kicking in. I don't even have caught it off Callum. Um, SWAT and the FBI on the headquarters of the Atlanta chapter of the Black Hammer Party. Black Hammer's Minister of Defence, AP, was shot and killed. So what actually happened here, if we go to the Daily Beast, and we're relying on them for our reporting, but it has some interesting <laughs> details. Um, Black Joker himself, Ghazi Kodo, was arrested after a body was found in his home. And this was the Black Hammer headquarters. So on Tuesday, the 19th of July, an anonymous, anonymous caller in a suburban Atlanta home rented by Black Hammer contacted the police to report they were being held against their will. When police searched the home, they ordered Kozo and nine other people outside. In the house, they found an 18-year-old man named Amonte T. Amons dead of what police now call a, an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. So it seems like Amons is the AP fella that they've eulogized and they're trying to claim that the police shot him, where the police are saying, well, this is basically impossible, it seems like he shot himself, and the body's been there a while. So it seems to be a bit of a John Wayne Gacy-style cover-up. Now Kozo, a 36-year-old whose legal name is Augustus C. Remain, <laughs> you could not get a more sort of... Remember, remove those petty bourgeois yes. from your movement. Yeah, the middle-class Augustus. Augustus C. Remain. Uh, he uh, genuinely sounds like a backpacker going through Bali. Um, it actually reminds me of when the Opie and Anthony show had Patrice O'Neill on to do a skit about how Arnold Schwarzenegger always gets the most white American lines despite his <laughs> accent. It's like in Jingle All The Way, he would not be a, a Howie Langstrom. And it's the exact same thing for this. Noted black nationalist Augustus C. Remain faces a bevy of criminal charges, including aggravated sodomy, saying nothing about the gay community, <laughs> two counts of conspiracy to commit a felony, two counts of false imprisonment, two counts of kidnapping, two counts of aggra- aggravated assault, and two counts of criminal street gang activity, according to a press release from the Fayetteville Police Department. Further details on the charges weren't available and uh, were weren't available Wednesday from the police. So. Um, There are more details in a minute. Um, It also reminds me of, have you ever heard of the story about the man who set up Kwanzaa? No, I haven't. So he was arrested because he held two women and tortured them, like strangled them with electrical cord, burnt their tongues with soldering irons, etc. But oh no, it's a pan-African holiday. That's horrifying. Yeah, wonderful. Same same thing with, I don't know if, uh, he, he apparently claims more influence than he actually peddled. But the fella who created Earth Day um, killed his girlfriend and composted her in a heap in his apartment and it seeped through to the one below and that's how he got caught. <laughs> Another yeah. Koto associate, a 21-year-old named Xavier H. Rushin, hilarious name, was also charged with several crimes including kidnapping, assault and false imprisonment. I'm surprised it took this long a former Black Hammer member who goes by the name Savvy and worked as Kozo's aide I'm not even surprised themselves <laughs> He worked as Kozo's aide before fleeing the group so this is obviously okay. the person they're referring to as being the snake in the grass in their prior one um, told the Daily Beast after Ammon's death was reported. So if we go to the Fox 5 article next, a local news outlet, it revealed more details from the arrest warrant for Kozo. According to the warrant, Romain ordered both Russian and Ammons to point guns at at least two victims and force them into the garage so he could anally sodomize at least one of them. That's horrifying. So it's a sexual hostage situation for black empowerment. Wonderful. I know he wanted to get people behind him, but come on. (laughs) What was that about monkeypox again? Uh, Black Hammer say the member organisation who called the police actually stole from them, though. So that's interesting. If we go to the next piece um, from their website, and obviously we have to take this with a table of salt, 
Um, so what happened on July 19th? An attack on the revolution. And they say, Like the parasite he is, the one who made the original call to 911 stuck around and ransacked the house to steal whatever resources were left for the homeless people of Atlanta that the pigs couldn't already take. He even stole AP's chain and Kino's late grandmother's watch flaunting on social media. If you scroll down a bit, John, there's like an Instagram screenshot of a guy in like Gucci clothing with a watch. Uh, keep Just keep going until you see it. Just, just keep going... It's down here. Yeah, this fella. This fella. Apparently they've included images of him stealing the chain and the watch, but obviously we don't know whether or not that actually happened. <laughs> All we do know is apparently this is the guy who called 911 to find a body in the house, so I'm less concerned about whether or not he stole from communists, who seem to disbelieve in private property anyway, and more about he rang the alarm on rape and potential murder or suicide. We, we are joking, but these people are some of the worst human beings imaginable. Oh, it's like you've presaged the fact that Ghazi then boasted about how this death will then be better for the cause. If we go to the next clip, oh, no. we'll just play it. At the end of the day, there's still breath in my body. I still run an amazing revolutionary party. Our community is effing with us. And now all these news channels are going to want to interview us. And we are going to get to communicate about all the great work that we are doing here. So... Uh, he should be behind the car up there. This is great. At the end of the day, this is a great moment. Right, comrade? This is a great moment. A moment where, you know, our voices will be amplified and our mission and cause will be informed. So there's a double dose of pills here. Ugh. Because, of course, the white pill is that now this <laughs> rapist, racist, egotistical psychopath is in prison. However, the black pill is this homosexual rapist, black nationalist, revolutionary psychopath is in prison, which means it's the most furtive recruitment ground possible for this crazy person. So oh. if we essentially locked the fox in the hen house, is prison food a form of reparations from taxpaying white Americans now? We must do one sensible thing to ensure that, unlike Gramsci, he doesn't have access to a prison notebook, otherwise his ethno-nationalist tirades will likely become the inspiration for the next sympathetic villain of Black Panther 3. But until he gets out, rot in hell, Kozo. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this premium video by Carl on Nietzsche's critique of critical race theory. If you want to follow what else he's putting out, you can follow him on Getter at at Carl Benjamin on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.